the next episode of Beastfair Breakroom Chats. I am your host, Shobhik Bhutani, Product Marketing Manager at VMware, responsible for um, uh, everything about AI and ML and Beastfair. Um, in this episode series, we bring VMware and partner experts to talk about VMware's vSphere and cloud products. These fabulous experts will also share their background, industry trends, general tips for our uh, IT experts and customers. Uh, today's episode, we have a very, very special guest today, Duncan Epping, Chief Technologist and Office of the CTO. Um, welcome, Duncan. Thanks. Wonderful. And then we're going to talk about why Kubernetes has become so popular today and something about container technology as well. Um, I'm really I'm starstruck today, Duncan. Duncan's a very, very well-respected industry expert. His, he has written several books. He reviews book, books of other authors as well. And his blogs, uh, yellowbricks.com, um, has you know thousands of followers in the IT industry. So welcome again, Duncan. Duncan, do you mind just kind of, uh, can you please share your background, what you're doing at uh, VMware today? Sure, sure. Yeah, as you mentioned, my name is Duncan Epping. I'm a chief technologist uh, working for the cloud infrastructure business group in the office of the CTO. Uh, I report into Mark Fleischman, who is the CTO for MultiCloud. And I am primarily responsible for talking to customers and at events, uh, you know, about things like vSphere, uh, things like, for instance, vSAN, vVol. So basically anything that is part of our business unit. Of course, we've got up to different responsibilities between our team, but that's primarily what I talk about. As you mentioned, I'm also the author of yellowbricks.com. And I also host a podcast called Unexplored Territory. And within that podcast, we basically talk you know, about all of the different uh, types of technologies that VMware has available. Outstanding. And then the most important question, what's your favorite beverage? Yeah, sure. Well, I drink a lot of tea. Uh, I also enjoy Diet Coke, but one of the other things that I also enjoy is a beer on a regular basis. As you can see, I have all of these bottle caps collected from the, uh, the last year and a half or so during COVID. And, you know, these are all of the different beers that I have had over the last year and a half from all of the different countries. So, uh, yeah, pretty interesting, I guess. But I'm not going to start drinking beer now. I'll wait with that until the episode is over. <laughs> and you said what, like, there's what, six or seven countries represented yeah. on that? Yeah, six or seven countries. I've had, of course, beers from more countries than that, but this is what I've collected the last year and a half. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm excited to see how this collection grows. Uh, let's today, so let's jump in, right? Container technology continues to get very well entrenched in the industry today. Like it's been there now 10 plus years, right? It's, it's mainstream at this point. What are the benefits of cont uh, containers? Yeah, sure. I think it's a great question to start off with. And when I talk to customers, one of the ways I typically explain it to, to customers, because the majority of customers are VMware customers, is I relate it to vSphere. And when we introduced VMware-based vSphere technology, uh, basically what we did is we abstracted the operating system from physical hardware, and we provided this container, this virtual machine that enabled you to start running multiple instances on a physical host. And basically we can do the same thing with applications, right? Container technology is kind of like a virtualization or a containerized solution for applications. So we basically package the application with all of the different um, uh, different dependencies that it needs. So if, for instance, there's a dependency on a particular application or, or a particular executable uh, to be there and uh, be available within the same environment, then that is what the container actually provides. Not only does it provide you the ability to start packaging these applications, but of course, as a result, it also provides the ability to actually have some form of portability. So you can move it between different operating systems, for instance, different flavors of Linux. And then last but not least, probably what I should be talking about is the speed that it enables, speed when it comes to the deployment of these applications and to updating and upgrading or patching these applications as well. Because in a lot of cases, an application is formed out of multiple containers and in some instances, you may want to patch just one container, right? And that's actually what you have as an ability here. In a traditional world where you want to patch or upgrade an application, you typically have to go through the whole stack. And in this case, you could potentially do that, you know, part of that microservice that you're offering. Wonderful, wonderful. So really cool, cool kind of explanation of that. Now, like every time a new technology is launched, even when it becomes mainstream, people you know, customers and enterprises tell us all the time what the different issues that they're facing with it. What's some issues with containers? 
Yeah, I think we are starting to see more and more challenges with containers. And it's basically because in a lot of environments, what we end up seeing is that developers start up with this technology without consulting the IT team. So they basically play around in a public cloud. They play around on their own laptop. You know, they get used to a certain type of technology. They prefer to use that type of technology. And before you know it, you end up with all of these different types of systems. So you typically have, you know, the same type of container technology, but it could be spread across multiple environments. So it could be within a public cloud environment, it could be on your laptop, it could be in the data center. And that actually introduces a lot of challenges for IT because IT is typically responsible, not just for managing those systems or deploying those systems, but also for securing it from a networking perspective, but also from a data point of view. So, you know, when applications are scattered around the globe, potentially, it becomes very, very, very challenging. And that's, you know, some of the things that we're starting to see with customers. Got it, got it. So as, as kind of like, um, you know, you've seen these sprawl issues and these management challenges that have come across the containers, like how is Kubernetes kind of helping with some of these challenges? And like, how is VMware helping the enterprises with this, solving some of these issues? Sure, yeah, if you look at it from a container perspective, right? Um, same with virtual machines. If you have one virtual machine, it's easy to manage. When you have 10 virtual machines, it's relatively easy to manage. When you have 5,000 virtual machines, you better make sure they have vCenter server available to manage all of those virtual machines and all of those hosts. And we see the thing, same thing with containers. If you have one container running on your laptop, well, you can manage that using the CLI. If you have multiple containers running, across multiple hosts, then you need some kind of container orchestration technology. And that's where Kubernetes comes into play. Now, Kubernetes offers you the ability to manage those different types of uh, containers and also schedule those containers, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a real orchestration platform. And one of the things that we've done as VMware is actually take that solution, this industry standard, and provide the ability through our offering, VMware Tanzu, to not only deploy Kubernetes clusters to manage all of your different containers, but of course, on top of that, also do all of the other things which customers feel is important with these types of solutions. And especially for those IT teams, because they are probably struggling the most. The developer creates the app, they create the container, the container gets deployed using Kubernetes, and they forget about it. But if you look at it from an IT perspective, that's where the trouble really starts for you as an IT team, because you need to provide an IP address, you need to have a DNS name, it needs to be accessible all throughout the network, but it can't be accessible outside of the network. So you need to protect it and secure it. Then on top of that, there's also the data aspect that comes into play. And of course, you know, availability, recoverability, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where VMware Tanzu comes into play. And when you look at things like VMware Tanzu, I think one of the things which is very important to realize right now is that with vSphere Plus, which we recently announced, we actually provide all of these different developer services, or as I like to refer to them, because they're not just developer services, they're also for the SREs. They are services for the VI admins. So we include things like the vSphere, uh, Tanzu standard runtime. We include things like Tanzu Kubernetes grid. We include things like Tanzu mission con uh, control essentials in this particular case. And all of these different services enable you not only to deploy Kubernetes clusters on top of vSphere, but also to do that across multiple clouds. So that could be VMware Cloud on AWS. It could be Azure. It could be anything. But not just deploy them, but also manage them, secure them in a way that is actually something that, you know, what your CIO is looking for. And I think that is probably one of those most important things. Fantastic, fantastic, right? So, you know, <clears throat> that's the key, right? Is, I think the key, one of the best explanations I've ever heard, honestly, for, for Tanzu is right there. It's just not Kubernetes, it's more than that, right? It gives you way more than just, just getting give you Kubernetes orchestration, because everybody's doing that. <clears throat> but it gives you way more flexibility, gets you into the multi-cloud, the ability to get have these, you know, environments in other places as well. So great explanation right there. Now, uh, as we're kind of uh, thinking about outside of that, just kind of stepping back from, you know, this, right, from what's now and the challenges now, like where is this technology headed, headed in the future, right, in the immediate two to three years, Kubernetes and microservices as well? Sure, yeah, I think first and foremost, to be honest, is that we see a lot of customers actually starting out with Kubernetes right now. So what we're starting to see within the industry amongst our customers is that a lot of customers are starting to standardize on particular platforms. That's the great thing, in my opinion, about the Tanzu solution is that it comes with all of these different components 
that we've tested that we made sure it actually works together and you can use that and implement that. So what that is one of the first things the customer is doing, standardizing. Then the second thing, of course, that we're starting to see happening is that a lot of more customers are getting, you know, probably more mature uh, in their development process. So they're starting to use more and more cloud native services. We see customers today, for instance, using a lot of persistent volumes and the persistent volume, volume is basically a virtual disk that has a file system and you can consume that file system by storing files. But what we're also starting to see is that more and more customers, of course, are using all of these different native services that can be provided in these cloud environments. That could be something like an S3 object store where they are storing you know, particular aspects of the application or that actually storing data of that application as well. It could be you know, a particular type of database, something like an in-memory database like Redis. You know, those different services we're also starting to see to being used a lot more. And I suspect that a lot of our customers, which you know, may start out with these container type of technologies today, we'll start moving towards those platforms as well. And more importantly, start leveraging platforms that enable running these services on top of that. Got it, got it, got it. Makes, makes a lot of sense. So <clears throat> last question. Uh, for, you know, IT professionals wanting to educate themselves in this space, right? Kubernetes containers. Y yes, I mean, it's been there for the last five, 10 years, still pretty new, right? So to speak, like, any tips you can offer, like which places that, could, that they can go to for kind of learning some of the space about the space? Sure. Yeah. The way I've learned about it personally is by following people like Cormac Hogan, William Lamb. Uh, they're both, you know, around on Twitter. They have a blog, which is excellent. It contains a lot of material. But of course, there's other people in the industry as well. You have people like Joe Beda, uh, Kelsey High Hightower. And then there's all of the different YouTube videos. I think there's probably like a thousand different, you know, channels available when it just comes to Kubernetes. So there's so many different opportunities to learn and explore it. The last thing I want to plug, because I know Cormac will be happy about that. Cormac is actually writing a book. The book's should be about finished. It's all about running Kubernetes on top of a VMA platform. So if you're interested in that type of technology and in interested in deploying that, make sure to read his book. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, Cormac's a great guy. I uh, really love his kind of, you know, what he's what he has to offer from a technical skill set standpoint. Uh, <clears throat> with that, we're coming to an end for the end of today, today's fantastic conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today, Duncan. No problem. Wonderful. Um, once again, I really appreciate uh, Duncan joining me today. I uh, appreciate all the listeners today, today watching this episode. And with that, that's the end of today. In today's episode, if you like this episode, uh, come back, join me again next week uh, for the next one. This is your host, Shobhi Patani, signing off. Have a fabulous day, evening, night, week, wherever you're at. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye until next time. Mm -hmm.